Okay, and start our songing out. Or songing, listen to me. Or songing out with me. Number 17. Number 17. Ready? Come thou fount of every blessing, join my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of proudest praise. Take me some melodious sonnet from my flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain. Verses 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us, predestinated us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to him himself, according to the God of pleasure and of his will, <clears throat> to praise the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted and beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to his riches and his grace. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the privilege to be here today. We thank you, Father, for your grace, your mercy, that you pour out upon us. We thank you, Father, also for the grace that's been given to us through Jesus Christ, your Son, the beloved Son, your only Son, who came so that we may have eternal life with you. We thank you and praise you, Father, for such a gift. And we ask, Father, for the indwelling of your Spirit today. Be, be please anoint Pastor Dan, with message that is loud and clear, that all may understand. And Father, please be with us, be alongside. And Father, we come here to worship you, for you are the only one and true Holy God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Main standing, take your song, we'll turn to number 175. Number 175. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, <laughs> through eternal ages let his praises ring. Number 175. On the first, ready? Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his Oh, 
church, and you need to make sure you get out your entire year's calendar. No, I'm kidding. This is month and next, all right? We have all kinds of stuff coming up. Um, we have, I just found out, now this is, this, this is exciting. Wednesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, if you know how to spell it, okay? Wednesday, on the 19th of this month, we have the United Nations showing up in two people. You've got to be here. This is exciting. Brother Eddie is telling me, he had a friend. Now, Brother Eddie was in where? Mexico. He had a pastor friend of his drive here from Mexico. He showed pictures. He was in his own driveway. It was, it was, it was exciting. I can imagine. Uh, my brother-in-law lives in Yuma, Arizona. He's driven out to my house three times. I can't imagine driving out there once. And this guy drove from Mexico through Carolina. Can you imagine coming through the Carolinas? Yeah, you know, <laughs> sure. And today he's in Vermont. But he'll be coming back down through it. Here's the best part. He's married to an American Japanese woman. Now she speaks four languages. He speaks three languages. And they are translating the Spanish Bible into another dialect that doesn't even have a Bible yet. You've got to be here. A brother Abby was telling me about it this morning. I tell the men in the prayer room, I, he talked to him about five seconds, and I would love to spend like three hours with this guy. Can you imagine the stories he could tell you about serving the Lord in Japanese, and in Spanish, and in English, and what's the other one? Spanish. Tenic. Tenic. Yes, you soon can have a tenic Bible of your own. <laughs> but you can have it. But he and his wife, right? Both of them will be here on the 19th, Wednesday the 19th. You cannot miss this. You've got to be here, all right? You've just got to be here. I mean, this man is serving the Lord. Some of us don't go across the street to witness to our neighbors. We don't even know our neighbors' names. And this guy drove all the way here from Mexico. Come on, really. It's worth your time just to come out and say thanks for driving, what, 45,000 miles to be here, right? No, so come on out and be with, be with us. What's his name? Uh, you know, you know, right? Yes, yeah. Fernando Angeles. Fernando Angeles. Uh -huh. We might have put that in English so we can know what it is. All right, come on out and be with him. Now, uh, on the 28th of this month, right? Nine days later, we'll be playing the movie Facing the Giants. First of all, it is a good movie. If you've never seen it, you're going to enjoy it. If you have seen it, you will enjoy it again. I just know you will. I, every time I watch it, you come out of there crying. I just, you love it. Why? Because they win! Yeah! I'm done like a football game where their, your team wins. It's absolutely amazing. you got to watch it. There's no blood, and there's no guts, and there's no shooting. But you will still enjoy it. All right? So come on out. And be with us. We are going to have hot dogs and popcorn, and we're going to have a great time. And we'll be taking up a collection for helping the setting out of the boxes of the Christmas child, right? Operation Christmas Child. Then, if you want to, come to movie night. Um, we haven't said that yet, but right now we're looking at 7 o'clock. If you want to just put that in your calendar for now, if it moves up, we'll let you know. But right now, we're planning on we'll look at that for 7. Uh, November the 12th. Packing party. We are going to have some fun. I've already got some games planned Mary doesn't know about and some other things we're going to do that Mary doesn't know about and she's in charge, okay? So this is going to be fun. Uh, come on now. We are, we watched, we watched a video and my wife was uh, on, on the Facebook page of Operation Christmas Child and it's humongous. It's really good. And there is a church, they packed 2,000 boxes in two hours. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, so, come on out. We won't take that long. Maybe. All right? But if you're here, we'll probably be here for two hours. But come on out. We're going to have fun. Um, listen, if you want to bring your children with you, it would be nice. We appreciate that. But the toys aren't there. Okay? And they're going to have to not take them home. All right? Yes, you have something? Oh, and next week, next week, we're looking for hats. And caps and, and scarves too, probably, right? Okay, yeah. And silk scarves. And if you have any uh, slinkies and oh. jump ropes, and jump ropes, slinkies, 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 hats, caps for the boys, 
wool caps that you can, because you can fold them easily, you know. Wool caps or baseball caps? Yeah, so find a nice scarf. To find a nice scarf. I'm a scarf person, so if you find a scarf, <laughs> that would be good, okay? But anything you want to bring is helpful, okay? Thank you. Excellent. So we're so up to that. The yes. Caffeine is on the twelve. Yes. Twelve of November. Yeah, there's a typo in the. Yes, and if you have one of the sheets, um, it does say twenty second on here, but it actually is the twelve. Yes, to answer it. As of last Sunday, we eclipsed a hundred dollars in collections for the boxes. All right. So if we are planning, our goal right now is forty eight. We'll probably do fifty easy. <coughs> So I now, have my in, the house past, back. in the past, they used to say, throw a $10 bill in the box to cover. Yes, or yeah, well, it is $10 box this year. So right. Yes. So that'd be nice. Yellow envelope. Yellow envelope. And listen, you put your money into an envelope and mail it off to them. That's, that'll cover your box if you want to do your own. But if you put it in your tithing envelope and drop it into the offering plate, then you also have a record for your taxes. I mean, you know, Uncle Sam takes an upper list about time to get some back, all right? So, you're putting in your tithe and envelope, your tithe and offerings act regularly in the envelope, just add another $10, $20, and then when you have that for a report the brother Daniel will give you next year for your taxes, all right? And then you can, you're still, it's all gonna go to the same cause, right? So this, uh, it is definitely an advantage. All right, pastor and his wife are not here today, or his children. Um, they've all gone to see the doctor now, and his wife, he thought for sure needed to be on antibiotic, on antibiotics. He's the only one who is not on antibiotics at this time. So uh, they're just taking some time to just recuperate and get all better, so we have him back for Wednesday, or at least next Sunday, all right? So let's be praying for our pastor. Um, let's see what else. There is going to be a uh, business meeting in November. All right, we're not sure of the date yet because there's a couple of different thoughts that they're running, but if you just want to have that set aside in your mind that the next business meeting for here will be in November. We're not sure if it'll be a Wednesday or Sunday night, so that's why we don't have a date on that as of yet. All right, let's see what else we have. Ladies Bible study, come on out on Tuesday night. Brenda hates to sit here by herself. <laughs> and Friday night, come on out. I heard they almost got into a fist fight Friday morning. Oh, man, you missed out if you weren't here. Oh, man, I heard feathers were flying in there. And my wife came home and said, it was all my fault. I said, I wasn't even there. I don't understand that. So you got, if, you, if you weren't here on Friday, we're going to tell you what happened. You're just going to have to come on next Friday. All right? So that's all there is to it. All right. Uh, gentlemen, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Gentlemen, let's get together. Um, praying for a couple different things, um, and we're going to have, might have a, a special speaker with us Monday night, but I'm not going to tell you because it's a surprise, and if I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise anymore. <laughs> all right? So make sure you're out, and let's see. I think that's about all of our announcements. Is anybody else? Yes, Brenda, something else? Um, yeah, on Sunday, uh, the 23rd, uh, we have a
beautiful music we just heard. We thank you, Lord, for these tithes and offerings that have come in. We thank you, Father, for it's just the return of a small portion that you have blessed us with. And we ask again, Father, that you please bless our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Isn't it nice having music? I said that on Wednesday. Peggy was back from her trip down south, seeing her grandbabies, holding them and playing with them, and the great-grandbabies. I said, we've been singing acapulco for so long. It sounds nice to have some music in the background, doesn't it? Uh, let's all stand and take your song books. Turn to number 450, 450 in your song book. There will never be a sweeter story, story of our Savior's love divine. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Number 450, 450 in your song book. Oh! 
time for uh, praises and prayer requests. I want to praise the Lord and take the team back safe. Yay. Because I can't play the piano. And Joe can't play with me. So I, we're not working it out yet. We'll look at him. Praise the Lord, Pinky came back safe and sound, and she got to hold her great grandbaby. How many do you have now? I got six great children. Six great grandbabies. I don't have three grandchildren. Well, does he need that? All right, cool. Um, any other praises this morning? Yes, Sarah? Praise God for answered prayer. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Answered prayer. It's always a good one. Jill, someone? Good. Excellent. Very good. That is always nice to hear. Um, did anybody have any word on Pat Maggie? I know she had Pat sent out through the prayer chain that she went through her heart valve change line. Yes, go. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> she had the pacemaker put in the day after she had the valve replaced. And she was in uh, ICU uh, because her heart rate was so low, and that's why they put the pacemaker in. And then she started, her lungs started filling with fluid, and they didn't know what it was. So they put a tube inside her, and the poor woman's laying there with a tube on her back, very uncomfortable, and plus her arms got to be elevated because of the pacemaker. So what they found is that her lungs were filling with fluid. There was a leakage around the new valve. And evidently, her valve was more like square, and the valve that went in was round, so just imagine putting a round peg in a square hole, and you got these corners that you can't fill with a round peg, and that's where it was coming from. So they went in, and they resolved that issue, and um, she's out of ICU. She's more comfortable. The drain's out, and you know, she's coming along. Did she be in the hospital for what, for another week? Maybe mm -hmm. uh, I don't. When she comes out, she's got to go on rehab for a, a week to ten days. But she's in the hospital at this time. How do you rehab a heart? Yes. 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 And Oliver? Did anybody hear from Oliver? He's bleeding eternally. Oliver? Mm -hmm. What? Bleeding eternally. Is he still holding it? He said, he told me last week that he's bleeding eternally and that there's not really anything that they can do for it. All right, let's be praying for Oliver. Well, I didn't hear that. John was up and visited him just the other day and he said he looked very lonely, but not. He's no. lonely, his, uh, his family's feeding him, taking care of him. Uh, phone calls would probably help you know, a lot rather than, you know. Stop by so much? Right. Sorry? Didn't stop me by? Would it be better to call him? Okay. Uh, actually, I don't call. I just stopped in. I, he knows I'm going on between 2 and 3 o'clock. So. He might not come to the door. All right? No. I think he might be there. So. No, he <laughs> just knock on the door. And the, if the inside door is open, just put the storm door ajar and say, Oliver, say who you are, and uh, he'll say, come on in. All right. There you go. I like that. I get you. Okay. Um, all right. Anybody else? Yes. In back. Yeah. Um, I'd like to continue prayer for my brother-in-law, Steve, Diane, my sister. Uh, their van was still having electrical problems. Sure, but the last time I spoke with Jeff about 
six weeks ago. Um, he was in Vassar because of his diabetes. Um, and diabetes is not something that <coughs> should be played with. It's, no. it's, and he had kidney issues also. From the diabetes. That's right. <coughs> Doctors can help him. What was his name? Eddie.
morning, the book of Esther, chapter 4. Esther, chapter 4. Esther, chapter 4, verse 10. Again, Esther spake unto Haddock and gave him commandment unto Mordecai, and all the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whatsoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king, come unto the king into his inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death. Except such whom the king hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. Then, and they told Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to this kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Let's pray. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity I have to stand here this morning and, and help me, Lord, not to mess up. Help me to Say those things that need to be said. Help me to honor and glorify you this morning. Watch your our pastor. Watch over him. Protect him and his family. Help them get feeling better that we might have them back in with us again soon. We've been missing him for uh, some time. And we thank you, Lord, for them. But might your word speak to our hearts this morning. Might the message that you put upon my heart reach those who need to hear it. Help us to honor and glorify you this morning, all that we say in the course. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray these many things. Amen. Amen. I wonder, first of all, if some of you are with me, take your phones and let's uh, mute them. We don't have to turn them off. You know, buzz in your pocket. You'll know somebody's trying to call you. It's probably your granddaughter. Let know what you're bringing home with you. I mean, it's what's in uh, as, Listen, this guy this week was talking about our service to the Lord. He says, oh yeah, I give the, I give the Lord all day Sunday. Now, Monday to Friday is my day, but I give the Lord all day Sunday. I give him the whole hour. I think he deserves at least that much. Take away those distractions and those things. As we look into this uh, message this morning, I'd like to take just part of what Esther has to say here or actually what Mordecai says to her. And he says, And who knoweth whether thou art come to this kingdom for such a time as this? For such a time as this. I have been asked by someone who loves me very much that I make sure to slow down just a little bit. I get excited. And I really get into the message, and, I, and sometimes the Lord just, I, 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 I can hardly control myself. But they told me, we can't always understand what you're saying. We're trying to uh, contemplate what you just said, and you're already on the next point. So I'm going to try my best to slow down so that you can understand me. Because I go crazy, all right? Yes. <laughs> We want to look at the story now. If you have never read the book of Esther, I encourage you to spend at least the hour or so to take and read through this book. It does not take all that long, and it is a good book. And guess what? It's not a story. It's history. This really happened. These people really lived, and these things really did happen. If you don't understand the story, you don't know what's going on, Esther is a young lady, and if you take your Bibles, and just turn back to chapter 2, we're going to pick up this a little bit understanding what's going on here. As you know, the king got really mad at his wife, and she didn't come out and do what he wanted, so he commanded to just get rid of her, and I'm not going to have her anymore. And his men, his counselors, if you would, the guys who are around him, say, you know, you can't just let her have that, or... 
uh, other women are starting going to fight us men too. So the king, you know, he puts her off, and then he decides, well, I, you know, I don't have a wife now, and now I need a wife, right? So he puts out, and they go out, and they collect all the fair young maidens in the land. Chapter 2. In verse 5 it says, Now in Shushan the palace there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jerai, the son of Shammai, the son of Kish, a Benjamin. Now along through this lesson, through this message this morning, I think we need to stop and just think about a couple things here a little bit. Now whenever you did, whenever a king did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and according to his word, the Bible said that he was the son of David. In a way, he could be the son of David. David would have been his great, 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 great grandfather down the line. But if you did right, David was a man who was what? After God's own heart. Now, if the king did bad, did wrong, and did like his own father, he got the title of his own dad. It says here, and it's interesting, it says that Mordecai was the son of, and the son of, the son of Kish. Now, I don't know about you, but it rings a couple of bells in my head. The very first king that the nation of Israel ever had was Saul. And his father's name was Kish. And not only that, but he was a Benjamite on top of it all. So as we're looking at this story, think about this just a little bit. Somewhere down in her heritage, Esther was also of a king's lineage. It's down there a little bit, but there it is. They had been captured when Nebuchadnezzar had come, Nebuchadnezzar had come in, sucked up a bunch of Jews, and brought them back to Babylon, and here they are now, living in this land. God did tell them, if you go back in the Old Testament and read along, you find out God told them to go there. Print, uh, plant your vineyards, build your houses, marry, have children, and he will be with them there. They were going to be there for 70 years. That's what he promised, and he brought them back. But here they are, and it says that Mordecai was living in Shushan, the palace. Verse 6, who, verse 6, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. So we know now how they got there. And he brought up Hadashah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter. Now, I am not the smartest man in the world, by sure, and it took me a couple of minutes to figure this out, so it's Mordecai's uncle's daughter, which makes her his cousin. cousin. And it goes on, and it, it says, uh, uh, says his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. He took her in, made her like his own girl, his own daughter, and he'd been treating her like this all this time. The order goes out, we want all the fair maidens, and Mordecai asked her, Hadasha, not to use her real name. All right? Look at verse 10. Verse 10. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. Now, we don't sure why, except for the fact that being a Jew, maybe she might not have been chosen. We'll see that later. We see that her parents are dead, and that because she is fair, maybe she is taken in. And I would like just to take just a slight moment to say today I've been married for three months, and my wife is fair and beautiful as well. She said I can only brag on her so much, and so that was my commercial. There we go. And not only that, there are some things, you can, it's... it's such a time as this. You've got, you've got to keep that in your mind and think about the details that are flowing through here. Let me look at verse 9. And then maybe verse 8. So it came to pass, same chapter, verse 8. And it came to pass when the king's commandment had his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace, to the custody of Haggai, 
that Esther was brought also unto the king's house to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her things for purification, with such as belonged to her, and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maidens unto the best place of the house of the women. Come back to chapter 4. Let's think about here just for a minute. Just think about this here for just a minute. And if you just contemplate what's going on and what's happening in her life and the things that are going on around her and what's just about to happen. We started reading in chapter 4, verse 10, and that Esther was told to do something. Something was going on. Esther didn't know what was going on. Esther didn't know what was happening. She's in Sushi and the palace. The king has chosen her. Now she's, she's the wife, and she's there inside the palace, and she doesn't know what's going on. Mordecai is coming and checking on her every so often, but all of a sudden there's something going wrong. Mordecai is outside. He's praying, and he's crying, and he's wearing sackcloth and ashes, and guess what? You cannot come into the kingdom into his palace wearing sackcloth and ashes. Esther said, finds out, and she sends out her friend, or sends out uh, uh, this man, and again, verse 10 says, and Esther, and again, Esther spake unto Hattach, and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. She had already sent this guy out to talk to Mordecai. She sent out other clothes for Mordecai to wear. Because you can't come in with what you've got on. And he tells this guy, Mordecai, tells that adage, listen, you got to tell us what's going on. See, Haman hates Mordecai. Oh man, he just despises him to the nth degree. You know, totally loathed him, if you would. Didn't like this guy at all. Why? Because he wouldn't bow down to him when he came. Oh, that just teed him off. He was so furious, and he came to the king with an idea. And he says, King, there are these people, and they're in your kingdom, and they're all over the place. And if something was to happen, we could be in trouble. How about we kill them all, and I'll give you 100 pieces, 100, 1,100 pieces of silver for every one. Now, the king said, Whoa. My, my bank account's going to jump here really fast. Just think, 1, 1,100, 2, 2,200, 4, 4,400. I mean, it's going to, I'm sure there's more than 4. I mean, can you imagine how much money it might be? Cling, cling, like, you ever see the little dollar signs of the cartoon? Cling, 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 cling. You know, yeah, man, I'm going to be rich. And Haman said, yeah, and I'll get rid of the guy I hate so very much. When the Jews heard it, and the king signed it, they were in trouble. Man, everybody's out there. They are wailing. They are praying. They are putting a sack off the lash. And they're praying unto God to take care of this, to help them through this. And she has no idea what's going on. So Mordecai sends this guy back. Tell her what's going on. Tell her this is what's happening. And you're going to do something. Verse 10. And again, Esther spake unto him and said, verse 11, And all the king's servants and the people of the king's province do no, this is the answer. This is Esther's answer. Everybody knows this law. Everybody knows this rule. It's not like a surprise. It's not written in small letters at the very bottom of your box, okay? Everybody knows what's going to happen. That whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the enter into inner court, who is not called, there is one law to put him to death. X. Except such, except such to whom the king shall hold out his golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come unto the king these thirty days. I don't know about you. I don't know what kind of king has a wife and doesn't talk to her in thirty days. I mean, I don't quite understand that. I think if my wife hadn't seen her in thirty days, if she was out there, I don't know if I'd hold out a golden scepter, just go and grab her. I mean, really, come on now. And I, I mean, she's beautiful, right? She's not some, oh, you know, oh, I hate her, you know. You know, 
David and Solomon, they had hundreds of wives, and I, oh, not her again. I mean, they're just whining all the time. Now, I mean, she's fair, she's beautiful. I think you hold out the golden scepter and say, come here, come here, come here. I mean, really, I don't know why she's worried about this. this is a, but this is great fear. I mean, he is the king. I mean, he's, he's in charge of everything, every place, and everybody. I mean, all he has to say, kill, boom, you're dead. That's it. I mean, maybe he had a bad time. Maybe, he's, maybe somebody burnt his toes or overcooked his eggs that day. You know, I mean, maybe, I'm getting, maybe she knows it better than we think. It's not just written in it, right? But she's scared. She's scared. And what does Mordecai, Mordecai says, and then Mordecai, verse 13, and said, then Caleb, then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape at the king's house more than all the Jews. You are one lady. I've asked you not to use your real name. I've asked you to hide it from everybody else. And if you read the entire book, you'll find out she actually does fess up. But we're looking at a different point here. Here Esther is looking at this and he says, You're in, and Mordecai says, you, even though you're living inside the palace, even though you are the king's wife, even though you are living there in royalty, you are not going to be exempt from what's going to happen. And if you do nothing and you say nothing, what's going to happen? What's he say is going to happen? For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. In other words, if you don't say something, if you don't do something, if you don't act on the information that you have been given, then guess what? God will just find somebody else. God will find somebody else. If you aren't willing to go and do what God is telling you to do, if you don't see the need, if you don't act on what you already have, then God will find somebody else. God will just find somebody else who will be willing to go, who will be willing to do. Somehow the deliverance would come. Deliverance has been brought through little children, little girls, little boys. A guy hiding behind a threshing field. Right? God will find someone else. He don't need you. I'll, I'll find someone else. But, listen, if you don't do it, what else is going to happen? But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to this kingdom for such a time as this. For such a time as this. We have looked at Esther, the dashes, her, um, her, her cousin, her mom and dad are dead, and she's living with him here. They were captured and taken up by the king, not put to death, and brought to Babylon, and there she lives. She was a fair maiden, and she's chosen. She is of the lineage of Kish, the king of all those women he meets and knows, chooses her to be his queen. And she is sitting in the palace at the time where if you're wearing sackcloth and ashes, you can't come in. She's a Jewish woman, and all the Jews are about to be wiped out. And what do you think? Who is standing right there in that place at that time? We are talking a little bit on Wednesday night about different things. You know, a parable is nothing but an earthly story that you and I can understand because sometimes God's mind is, well, all the time, God's mind is way over us. You know? If God could be foolish, he'd be way beyond what we can do. The most smartest minds ever put together can never even catch up to what he's got. So let me put it to you in this meeting. I needed the oil changed in my truck. This is Jim Barnett's parable to the story today, okay? So I needed the oil changed in my truck. 
But some things had to come together for that to work. Number one, I had to get up and I had to drive the truck to where the change the oil. The lady who's working at the desk is going to accept me when I come in and take my paperwork and take my money eventually. She had to get up. And then there's the mechanic, the guy who's going to put your truck hooked up on the lift, drain all that oil out, put in a brand new filter, check my antifreeze and all my fluids and my tires and rotate them. He had to get up too. He had to get his car or whatever and he had to come to work. And the lady had to come to work. And I had to bring the truck to where they work for it all to happen. I walked in and she greeted me, took my keys, gave it to the mechanic, and what? He took my truck and went in and did the repairs. See, all these things had to come together. I don't know about you, I've watched several movies and you meet this person over here, this person over here, this person over here, and this person over here, and as the movie continues, all of a sudden you realize they're all on the same train and they're all going to be involved in the same accident at the same time. It all just kind of like clicks. And here is Esther. She's sitting at such a time as this. <clears throat> it's all going to click. If her parents had never been passed away and if she'd be left back in Israel, in Egypt, or back in Israel with her other people, she wouldn't have been there at that time. If they had not been taken, she would not have been there at that time. See how God will take all these things and work them together just for a certain point at your life, at your time, and he's going to do something. But Esther looks at this as a very important something. Let's continue on down verse 15. It says, Then more, then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, either neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go unto the king, which is not according to law, and if I perish, I perish. Folks, this was so important to her, she decided to fast. Not for one day, not for two days, and not for three days. But for three days, yes, three days. I don't know about you, I have fasted several times in my lifetime for certain different occasions. Once again, this beautiful, lovely lady sitting over here next to Peggy, who's also another lovely lady. I fasted and prayed for her for two days, whether she should be the woman that should be my wife or not. She did not know that. Only me and God knew that. But see, I always thought when you're praying and fasting, you didn't eat anything, and you just drank water. They didn't even drink water for three days. I know about you. You can have, the Bible tells us when you're doing a prayer and fasting for a specific reason, you're not supposed to tell anybody. Just, you know, right. because, you know, the Pharisees, they all, you know, they get their faces all drawn out by putting on some powder. Oh, I'm fasting, you're afraid. Why? Because they're trying to get, uh, get you to feel something for them, right? If you really don't, don't let anybody know and don't tell anybody. It's just between you and God. It's something very special between you and the Lord. You are telling your body, no, you can't have that. No, you're not going to do that. Because I have something very important. And what are you doing if you're not eating or drinking? What are you supposed to be doing? Praying mm -hmm. and talking Amen. to the Lord. Everything. It was so important to her. She says, Mordecai, get all the Jews together. You can find this Jewish in the past. And I want you to, to fast and pray. Fast and pray for three days. Let me ask you, how many here fasted and prayed one day for the Tempe Bible? For the Tempe Bible. We had praying for people to come in. You know, we didn't even think about taking time out and just praying and fasting for a day that we looked at to be very important. We prayed this morning. We wrote it down. We prayed for unsaved, loved ones, unspoken. How many times do we pray and fast for them? Because it's that important. 
Three days, you aren't going to eat anything. For three days, you're not going to drink anything. My son and I, years ago, had the idea we need to lose weight. It kind of worked. Of course, then we put it back on. But anyhow, we had this idea, we're going to go on a liquid diet. We're not going to eat anything, we're just going to drink. We have this special stuff, we're going to drink it, and we had this job, we went out and did it together. We had to the hole, poured some cement, and set a flagpole. I'm out there after two hours, I'm sitting here in my truck, and I am about ready to die. I cannot believe that. Normally, I have a nice big breakfast, give you the strength to make it through. The, I am the same. I have never been that guy who's going to, if I was, if I was water, I would just, Right off the ground, I was gone. My eye couldn't lift my arms. I don't think I still got seven bags of cement any bit for yet. I mean, it was like, that was never going to make it to. That was only one day, can you imagine, three. I was out cutting grass. What about you this summer? I mean, what an amazing summer we had. No rain for days and days. It's hot, it's dry. Don't drink anything for three days. My tongue is sticking to the top of my mouth. And it's going to be four hours. I'm going to be in this guy's yard for four hours. No, don't worry. Two days and 20 more hours, you can have one. I mean, can you just imagine? Cotton mouth, huh? It was that important. And not only that, but Esther said, me and my means would do it also. She wasn't asking just Mordecai. You know, I have this important thing I need to do. I, Brother Eddie's going to go on a mission trip to Mexico, and we need to pray for him. And he said, let's fast and pray for my trip. And I go, but I'm going to go over to uh, the Texas Longhorn Steakhouse, and, and me and Emily, we're going to have we're going to have baked potatoes, and we're going to have steak, and we're going to have all this yummy stuff. And but make sure you guys are praying and fasting for me. No, 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 no. And not only is this me... And my maids. Can you imagine your maids sitting there? Well, we're not going to eat for three days. We're not going to drink for three days. Three days. And here comes the pasted on resistance. On top of it all. And if I perish, I perish. See, they're going to bring us before the Lord for three days. Fasting, praying, no eating, no drinking. For three days. And I'm going to go before the king. And if I die, then I'm dying. That's what's going to happen. I mean, she put it all in there. She put it all in. We were talking about the widow's mite the other day. That lady walked in there. She dropped in her two, her two little mites. And Jesus said she gave more than everybody. Because why? Because she gave everything she had. And they were giving up their abundance. I put that in perspective in my mind just a little bit. That's like taking all the money I get every month for my Social Security, for my pension, when it comes to just write a check for the whole entire amount and drop that into the offering envelope. And then, yeah, all my savings account and my checking account, write that on the one big check and drop that in the offering envelope. And all my other savings, my investments, I'm going to cash all them in, write all that out on the check and drop that in the envelope and watch Brother David just pass out and see how the Lord take care of me now. I mean, this woman was all in. She is all in. Mordecai says unto her in verse 14, Thou art come to this kingdom for such a time as this. Verse 17 says, So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Story Esther is an amazing story. God's amazing deliverance. The man who hated Mordecai more than anybody in the entire world ends up dying with the device that he built. To kill Mordecai. And not only that, Mordecai ends up with his job. No, Esther did not die. The king held out his golden scepter and asked her to come in, and she asked him to come to something special. But that's not what we're here about. That's the thought I want to bring out today. What if today is the time? What if today is such a time as this? Brother Greer, out under the tent, he preached a message talking about this place. 
His message was about this place. Talking about how when something amazing happened in your life, in your Christian life, whether it be your salvation day, or how you dedicated yourself to the Lord, or you've been off from the Lord, and you came back and got it right, and how wonderful that day was. And you're sitting here, and maybe your life's not where it ought to be, or maybe you're just having a hard time, and you can look back to that day. And think about how wonderful it was. And how amazing it was. And the remembrance of it brings back good memories to you. And you know how good God was to you. But what if today is one of those days? What if this is such a time as this? What if this is your day? I don't know you. I, I bet some of you shaking your hands, talk to you, get to little know about your life and, and your families, and, and we've done things together, vacation Bible school, under the tent, eating the uh, food around each other, coming to church, shaking hands, whatever. I've gotten to know you a little bit, but I don't know you like you do. And God knows you. Maybe, just maybe, there's someone here today if they were to die right now, if they were to die right now, and that heart stops ticking, do you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you're going to go to heaven? Is that a question that's rolling around in your mind for a while? Is that something that's going heavy on your heart, and you're wondering, am I, can I, should this? could be your day. <clears throat> this could be the day when we could take and open up this book, which is indeed the Word of God, and show to you the promise that He has for you that you can have everlasting and eternal life. This could be your day. This could be your time. This could be your time where you make a decision that I'm going to stop being a mediocre, awful, disgusting Christian and step up and start doing and living the life that I should be living and not this mess that I have got myself into. People live lives that are a mess and they, and they just don't know what in the world to do. Why? Because you're not doing what God's Word tells you to be doing. You're fighting them all along the way. Wednesday night, do it in here real quick, talk about vines. You know what vines do? They fight back. I had that vine I was pulling on. I'm 212 pounds of awesomeness. I grab this vine, try to pull it out of the tree, and it pulls me back up into the tree. <laughs> You're fighting the Lord. It's not even the vine. It's not even the tree. It's not even the bush. It's not even your kids. It's God, and He knows everything about you. You can't hide it from Him. Go sit in a closet under a box and put a blanket over your head. Guess what? He can still find you. He knows where you are. He can see you. Go out as far as you want. Find the farthest mountain out of the deepest part of the ocean. Guess what? He's right there. You can't get away. Try to run from him. Try to hide. Ask some people from the Bible. You can't run far enough. You can't go high enough. You can't go deep enough. He knows right where you are. Get into a deep cave, nice and deep. Have the rocks fall on top of you. Guess what? He's still right there. Maybe this is your time. Maybe this is your time to get your heart right with the Lord. To say, Lord, I have been gone way too long. Like that prodigal son. My father has all these things. I'm sitting here about waiting to eat the leftovers from the pigs I haven't eaten. Am I nuts? God has the bestest life for you. It's not going to be wonderful, fantastic. I'm sorry. This is the world. You're not in heaven yet. But I tell you, you can be safer in a foxhole with bullets over your head than in your own back at home. If you're in the will of God and doing what you be doing. We saw a missionary online the other day. He's from Ukraine. And he's talking about how he's the what? 30 miles? 30 miles from 40, with 40 miles 40 minutes, whatever. It was not very far from the Russian army. I mean, guys with guns in uniform. And between him and them were Ukrainian army and their uniforms and their guns 
and the materials. I mean, that's where he lives. You're safe for there because you're doing what the Lord would have for you to do. Maybe this is a time for you to accept Christ as your Savior. Maybe this is your decision to ask Him to take over your life. Maybe this is your time to give Him all that you are. Brother Greer preached a message at the time about this place, thinking about how it was then. But maybe today, the 9th of October, 2022, at 20 after 11, it is your time. Maybe it's your time. This altar is not just a place to come and kneel. It's a common place to leave your Self and let God take over your life. This is a place where you can come and say, Lord, I'm not a whole lot of anything, but if you want me, I'm all yours. Giving your life completely over to Him, whatever you want me to do, wherever you might want me to go, however you might want me to do it. I'm just yours. Here I am. Or you might think, Lord, I don't know who you are yet, but I want to know. <clears throat> Maybe you don't know him as your Savior. Maybe you still don't have that security in your heart and your mind, and you need him. This could be your time. It's all scanned. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. Esther was given a command by, Ed, by Mordecai with the thought that this, such, this could be such a time as this. <clears throat> and Esther says, and if I perish, I perish. She was willing to give it all for what she believed was right. To do the right thing. No one looking around, no one peeking, just, uh, just me here. If you were to die today and you are not 100% sure that you'd go to heaven, would you raise your hand that I could pray for you? I am not going to let anybody know. Anybody at all. If you were to stand before the Lord right now, this very second, would you want him to meet you with the life that you have been living? Or is there something in your life that you wish you had gotten rid of before you saw it? This could be your time to get that right. The altars are open. I'm not a man, and when I'm doing my preaching, I'm not the kind of person who likes music playing, to play in your heartstrings that you come up because the music is affecting you. Listen, this is between you and God, and it is a cold, hard, right in your face kind of thing. If you really mean this business with the Lord, you're going to come down here right now. <coughs> Step out of your seat and come down here right now. Get your heart right with the Lord. Get the things right with the Lord, whatever it might be. You're not looking to look at me. Listen, I, I pray enough in my week and in my day to keep my heart right. You need to be keeping your heart right with the Lord. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we have here today. We thank you for the opportunity we have to bring forth your word this morning. It's not mine. It's all yours. Lord, you've given it to us for such a time as this. If someone here today who needs to do business with you, whatever it might be, the Lord, that they would do it. That they would step out and get it right. That they would come forward and, and take care of business today. If not, that before they pell their head and seed, and before they lay down and take that nap or sleep the night, that they would think about what your word tells us. It is this time we have now. We aren't promised a tomorrow. We're not even promised later this afternoon. You could come back and we'd be standing in your presence in whatever shape that we are in. But we have an opportunity right now, this minute, this time, to be right. I just ask and pray that you help us, Lord. Please help us to serve you and love you and do that which you'd have for us to do. 
And might we give our lives to you to use. For it's in Jesus' most precious name we ask these many things. Amen. Amen. Take your song book with me and turn to number 132. Number 132 in your song book. Pastor? Yes, sir. May I ask a question? Sir? Before the final mm -hmm. hymn. Um, in your preparation for today's words, what made you pick Mordecai and Esther? I was ready to preach this message three weeks ago, but Pastor got better. Okay. And yeah. it was only because, uh, I think mostly because of Brother Greer's message, and I think the two just clicked in my mind. <clears throat> well, your analogy of this person had to come together to get my oil changed, and that guy had to come together, and all these things had to come together for you to preach the message. Pastor had to get sick, you had to be called upon, and you chose this message. And I'm sure you're aware, but the congregation needs to know that in the Jewish High Holy Days, today is the first day of Purim. For a whole week, they celebrate Esther. <laughs> For such a time as this. Exactly. I want to, I want to encourage you with that. That is, that is amazing. <laughs> I... Right on my head. I that. Well, <laughs> wow. That is amazing. Right. And in Esther, in Esther, it says the following. <clears throat> and these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city. That these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. Purim means hidden in Hebrew. And God was hidden in Esther to, for just a time as this. Yeah. Esther that, means hiddenness. I looked that up. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is cool. Uh, I just. He is too. You know, Lord, I tell you. That's God changing your oil. That is cool. I write that down. <laughs> All right, turn to number 132. We know that now, right? He lives. He works together all things. He does. Good. Wow, that is amazing. <laughs>
Missed.